Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Palmy and in today's video we're going to look at volumetric lighting aka God rays in Dash Studio. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in Dash Studio and today we're going to look at volumetric lighting, also known as God rays. So you get those really cool effects that you see in movies or in some games, you'll see the God ray effects and we're going to do that today using what's available to us in Dash Studio. So first of all, before we begin, you need a prop that has a window. Um, it's not going to work without a window, so you need a prop with a window. In this case, you can see this prop here. I've got several windows here, which makes it really easy for me to do this. So the whole point of God Rays is to get this wonderful volumetric lighting. And with the volumetric lighting, what we're trying to do is get uh, people's eyes on that point in your scene. So we don't want to light the whole scene up. We don't want to light the whole room up in this case. We just want to light up that specific area. So you want to leave a bit of mystery in the room, you know, make it a bit more, um, a bit of drama, a bit of tension. You don't really want to light the whole room. So let's get started with the tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is we need to position our cameras. So I've got my two cameras positioned already where I know is going to be the best kind of lighting because I want my lighting to be around about this area. So what you need to do is pick a point where you want your lighting to be and position your cameras there. So I've got one camera here and one camera here as well. And that's my kind of like my starting point. So now I need to do is I need to um, create uh, the light source. Now the light source you can use is you can use Sun Sky if you want to. So we can go to the Sun Sky environment, uh, environment tab here in render settings and use Sun Sky if you want to use that. I prefer to use actual spotlight to kind of mimic the sun, so to speak. So the spotlight in this case will be doing, uh, will be acting as the sun. So I'm going to create a spotlight, create new spotlight. Uh, we're going to just apply it to this camera setting here and I'm going to move it into right position first. So I'm going to move it out and obviously with the sun it needs to go higher up so I need to go up. And remember as I always say your light should be coming from an angle from the from above. So it should be coming from above um, and not from down below if it's going to be acting as like the sun. So somewhere around here may be okay. Obviously, I may have to move this, move the spotlight because I don't know exactly where it needs to go, uh, but I have a rough idea. So I want it somewhere down here maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, yeah, probably down here. We'll see what happens. So let's do a little preview and see what is happening. I'm gonna go to my camera too and do a little preview and see what is happening with this light. Is it in a good position? Is it not? Okay, so we need to turn up the lumens, obviously. So where is the lumens here? So into our parameters, light for our spotlight and the luminosity. Now, obviously the luminosity or the lumens uh, will vary uh, depending on how much intensity you want. So just go pretty high. That's probably not high enough, to be honest. Probably need to go a bit more higher. Maybe add a zero here. Okay, that looks good to me as a beginner, as a starting point. So obviously lumens you'll have to play with and exactly how much you need, that is up to you. Not one lumen setting will work for everybody, so you have to uh, play with that. Now the color, I want to be to look more like the sun, so I need to change the color here to a bit more sun, so a bit more, just a bit of yellow. It's a light tint, doesn't have to be that much. And you'll see the difference straight away, so it's starting to be a bit more yellow, excellent. Uh, now at the moment, it's at point. Light jump to his point. So I've got sharp shadows here. I do not want sharp shadows. I want soft shadows. So I'm going to change that to rectangle. Okay, you'll see that these will start being softer. Can you see they're a bit more softer now? And now to increase the softness, what I'm going to do is increase the actual uh, diameter height and the width. So something like 50. And you'll see straight away at the shadows, they'll start to get very soft. There you see, they've gone very soft. So that's how you control the softness of the shadows using a light geometry rectangle you can use a rectangle or disc it doesn't matter which one you use these two are the best for softness and the more um, the more height you add the more width you add in terms of uh, intensity so if I went 100 here 100 here the the shadows will be very 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 soft so that's what we're doing there okay so we've got our light it's in a decent position and what we need now is actually create our volumetric cube so the clue there was volumetric cube. So I need to create a cube primitive. So create new primitive and it needs to be a cube. And the divisions don't matter. The size doesn't matter because we're going to increase it as well. Just make sure it's at world center and Y positive. Accept. 
Great, and now we just need to resize it so it fits the whole room. So I'm gonna just gonna come at from perspective, come into perspective mode, uh, view, so I can see uh, where my cube is, and I'm just gonna scale it really. So I'm gonna scale it. Okay. Now you're probably thinking, how is the light gonna get through now? And you're absolutely correct. No light is getting through that cube unless we go to the surface settings. So let's go to the surface settings, and this is where the magic happens, so to speak. So let's go to surface settings. So what we need to do is make this cube into a volumetric source, basically a volumetric um, source where the light goes through, hits the, the light goes through into the volumetric source and starts scattering everywhere and therefore creating our God rays effect. So what we need to do for that is we need to do these settings here. So the glossy layered wave in one zero, we don't want the surface of the cube to be glossy at all otherwise the light will not uh, go through as expected and we don't need any re reflectivity so we like to turn that to zero we don't want any light reflecting off it because it's not a shiny surface we want it to go through it and the refractive index needs to be one so we want very little refractive index so we don't want that kind of glass kind of look that we do because remember refractive index uh, changes uh, the actual um, what it looks like so remember when we did the glass eye ray um, the glass eye ray tutorial I went through the refractive index the higher you go the more it changes what kind of glass it looks like so you can check that tutorial here as well at the top I'll put the card at the top if you want to check out that tutorial if you want more information about refractive index and the refraction weight needs to be at one and there it is it's invisible Okay, so now it's invisible. Let's go back to our camera two position. Let's put the RA preview mode back on and you'll notice nothing's happened. It's more or less the same when it comes on. There we go. Nothing's happened. It's more or less the same. And you're probably wondering why is that? Well, we need to go down and actually turn our off thin walled. So we're going to turn off the thin wall settings and that gives us more options. So it gives us these options here as well. So the first thing you want to do is scattering measurement distance. Uh, you can leave that as the default for now. The direction, we can leave that for default for now. What we need to do is a subsurface scattering amount. So how much of the light we want to scatter around in this volumetric cube that we created, how much we want. Now for this, you need very, very low values because if you go too high, you won't see anything. And I'll show you that later on. So something like a good starting point would be something like 0 0.068, that's fine. And as you can see, there's nothing there. It's because our scattering measurement distance now, we need to sort that out. So basically what's happening is we have very little scattering measurement distance and therefore we're not going to get uh, any scattering whatsoever. You can't see it, it's just invisible. It's just, there's nothing there. So we need to add some values. Uh, something like 50 is a good starting point. And there we go. So that's a good starting point there. So you can see now the lights coming through. I mean, getting that kind of volumetric lighting coming through is basically making the whole um, area very dusty. And this is the kind of beginnings of your God Ray kind of volumetric lighting. So what else you can do is we can, the SSS direction, uh, we can actually choose different values. Now it doesn't make too much difference, but if you don't want to go any higher than one, even though one is the maximum, you'll see that nothing happens. Basically what happens is when you go to the values of minus one and one, light is being scattered in, but it's not coming back out. So that's what's happening with the SSS direction. So if I went to minus one, you'll see the same effect, nothing will happen. And you'll get the same effect. So you want values between 0 0.5 or minus 0.5. Okay, there we go. So we've got a lot of uh, dust going on here basically. So in this case, what I would do now is I wouldn't touch all the settings. I will just leave the SSS amount where it is and the SSS direction. And the scattering measurement distance is the main one, is the one that I will play around the most, is the one I will increase. So let's try 100. That looks pretty good. So we've got our kind of uh, God rays coming through. Now the only problem is it's very dusty. So what we need to do now is we need to go back to the spotlight and I need to go back and actually increase the intensity because when God rays come, when you see the volumetric lighting, there's a bit more intensity in the light, which makes it more sharper. And for that, what I'm gonna do is get the spread angle and turn the spread angle less. So I'm gonna decrease the spread angle by half, so make it 30. 
So now you're seeing a bit more of the God rays effect, the volumetric lighting coming through here. So actually I would probably even go lower than that, maybe 10. Okay, so there is your kind of God rays right there as well. Um, so we've got our God rays coming through and you can see if I go back to the spotlight, what exactly is happening. So oh, you can't see from there. Sorry, the perspective view, so you can see what's happening. There you go. So you can see a beam of light coming through and it's scattering everywhere. And then there we're getting our beam of light, our volumetric lighting there. Now, the reason why I chose that angle from here at the top is if I can just go up there to show you, uh, let's get out of that mode because it's going to take a very long time to get there. There we go. Maybe this will give a better view. Okay. So let's go back to Iray so I can give you a bit more detail as to what's happening. Just wait for the preview to kick in. There we go. Okay. So the reason why I did the angle from here, there we go. This bit here is a way to block out the light. Okay. So I don't, if I have the whole light shining through, you won't get that God rays effect. And if you wait till the end of the tutorial, I'll show you a really cool trick on how you can actually create God rays and not have it kind of pointing in this area where you can have it pointing anywhere the light and you'll still get that God rays effect. So make sure you stay to the end of the tutorial for that. And so that's why I put it there because I want to block this part of the light out and then only this section of the bottom of the light goes through, giving us this effect right here, the God rays effect. Now, obviously we can go back to the cube and then we can uh, go back to the surfaces and we can play around with the scattering measurement distance more. So we can go double 200 and you can see it changes a bit more. So we're getting, uh, we're basically getting, uh, it's basically less kind of dusty, but it's more focused in this area now. So this looks a lot better actually. We can even go higher 300 if you want to and see what that looks like. And there you go. So there's your kind of God rays effect. So. Remember, we're not trying to light the whole scene. We're just lighting specific areas and therefore, therefore this works. If you start lighting other areas of the scene, you won't get the God rays effect. You need the darkness here. You need the darkness here. That's the play on the light. So you got to remember, this is a really cool thing to remember is you want to play with the actual variations of light. So you want to play with dark, light, dark. Okay. That works very well. Um, in a lot of uh, images you see, uh, renders that you see, you want to play with the dark, light, dark. You want to play with the alternating on and off, basically. And that gives you this really cool effect. Now this, I would be very happy to render this and then take it into Photoshop and start doing some post work processing. So those of you that stay to the end of the video, what I'm going to show you now is a unique way on how you can actually create a, a cut holes in a primitive that you can use as your kind of like your, your window, your light source, your window to kind of get your... Uh, God race through. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to take this off for now. I'm going to go back to my perspective view so I can see everything. So what we're going to do is create a primitive. So new primitive, uh, make it a plane. And so for this one, we're going to need divisions. So I chose 50, but you probably don't need that many, but 50 is, is pretty decent. And the, the size doesn't matter anyway, because we're going to uh, increase the size anyway. So click accept, there it is on the floor. So I need to go to my plane, I need to go to parameters. Let's translate this. And I always get this mixed up. I think it's X rotate 90. Nope, I always get that mixed up. It's Z rotate 90. There we go. Okay, so uh, I need to bring it closer. So I need to do X translate, get it out here. And I'm just gonna scale it. There we go. Okay, and now I need to see the actual divisions. So we need to go to our geometry, uh, sorry, our Y shaded mode. And you can't see it because the volumetric cube is in the way. So you see look, the Y shaded, the volumetric cube here is in the way. That's why I can't see the divisions. So I need to just bring it out a bit more. So a bit more X translate so we can see everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm I literally cut holes in here like a rectangle. So I'm going to um, go to, I'm going to uh, go to my tool settings. I'm going to go to Geometry Editor. I'm going to right click Selection Type, sorry, Selection Mode Marquee. And I'm just going to draw, I'm just going to highlight some uh, rectangles, some uh, some divisions. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go to Editing and then I'm going to delete the selected polygons. So I'm going to delete these polygons. I don't want them. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. There we go. So there's my kind of like uh, my window, so to speak. And another one I'm going to do here. 
And I'm going to right click again. I'm going to go to editing and I'm going to delete the selected polygons. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Cool. So let's put this back into place. So X translate. And I'm going to bring it down a bit. Y translate down. Actually, no, we're going to leave it up here. Actually, yeah, we could do that. There. And I'm going to move it across a bit. Actually, we could, now we'll leave it there. Actually, that will be fine. Yeah. So let's move our spotlight now. So my spotlight was up here and I just need to move it back. Focus it on this area here. Let me just go to perspective view and see what that looks like. If uh, Go back to texture shading so you can see where my light is. Where have you gone? There it is, a bit far away actually. Well, we'll see how that works actually. Let's see how that works. So let's go back to my camera. Two, let's go to NVIDIA Irie and let's see how that looks now. So let's give it a second to kick in. There we go. Um, I can use camera number two, one and number one there so you can see my mid track. There we go. So that's so now we can see now the actual light is coming through those areas there where we made it with the, the cutouts that we made on the actual plane. So if I go back to my perspective view, we can get a better look. There it is. So light's going through there. So that's another way of doing it. The light's going through there and we're seeing our volumetric lighting coming through here. There we go, really, really cool effect. I really love this volumetric lighting. There's so many ways you can use this to add a lot of um, drama attention to your scenes. Now, another trick I'm gonna show you right now is, so you can see that you can do it with a plane by cutting out with the geometry editor. Now, I've already covered that in a tutorial, so I'll put the link for that card up here as well that tutorial if you want to go check out that one. Um, so we, so as you can see, we're using, we are developing our skills as we're going through. We're using things we've learned earlier and we're applying those skills. So that's what I want you to do in these videos is to apply previous skills we've learned together and then apply as you go on on your journey. So that's what I'm trying to show you here as well. Now, another thing we can do is if you really want very intense light, like very intense light for whatever reason, we can go to our render settings here and if we go to tone mapping, uh, what we can do is the film ISO. So the film ISO, what that does, it just boosts boosts up the lighting for everything in your scene. So if you had uh, spotlights, if you had point lights, if you had uh, your background, your dome, if you had some HDR, HDRI map, it's gonna boost up the lighting for that. So if I did something like 500, it's gonna boost it up. There we go. So we get that very, very bright, um, we get that very, very bright light. So that's another way to boost the light. But remember when you do that, you boost everything else up as well within the scene that you're using. So we kind of lost a bit of our, you know, we've got a bit of lighting in the back, which is great. So we've kind of lost a bit here in terms, but you can still see it's very intense light and that might be something you want to do. Or you can obviously remove that and we can not remove it, sorry. Let's put it back to default. So you go back to the spotlight um, you can actually increase the intensity from here as well. So we can go 200%. I want 200% of that. And we get the same effect, but we still get the darkness at the back. So we still get this lovely uh, light coming through. So again, you can go back to the cube and you can always um, go to the surfaces and play around with the trans uh, scattering measurement distance. You can you can play around with the SSS amount as well. You can go to uh, 0 0.1. Uh, you can go pretty, you know, you can see a bit more, so it starts to scatter a bit more, gets a bit more dusty, basically. So these two kind of work together. You don't want to go to one, because if you go to one, it gets very, very dusty, and you can't see any separation between the actual light here and in the background. So you don't want to go too high with that. So you want very low values, uh, 0 0.1 would be fine. So it's something you need to play around with. It depends on the size of your room as well, or your prop. And the bigger the room, the bigger the prop, the different values you're going to have to use. So you might need to go higher or lower depending on that. And that's why that's why you need to play around with these settings here. Okay, so I hope you found that information helpful there. And now you know how to create those wonderful volumetric lighting effects in Dash Studio, aka Godrays, and the two methods on how you can do this in Dash Studio. If you found this video helpful, if you found it valuable, hit that like button. If you have any comments or questions regarding that video, leave them down below as well. And make sure you hit that subscribe button, it helps out the channel a lot as well. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos. 
And before I leave you, I have an exciting announcement to make. I have my first advanced tutorial, which will show you how to create unique characters in Dash Studio without any modeling experience. So you don't need any modeling experience, and we're gonna use everything that's in Dash Studio to create these unique characters. If that's something you're interested in, the link is in the description box down below as well for that. And having said that, I'll see you in next week's video.